Mary Turner was the pregnant wife of a man who was wrongly accused of a murder. In 1918, this man, Hayes Turner, was hung, and his wife threatened to get the white men who murdered him arrested. They then hung her upside down, set her on fire, and cut the baby from her stomach. This woman did nothing but seek justice, yet she and her unborn child were gruesomely lynched. Lynching means to punish a person without legal process or authority, especially by hanging, for a perceived offense or as an act of bigotry. It was a common practice committed by white mobs against African Americans. Lynchings were used as a method of intimidation, superiority, or terrorization. The anti-lynching crusades, which took place in the late 1800s and throughout the early 1900s, were a series of movements to eradicate lynch law and mob violence. The movement was started by black women to take a stand against the extra-legal violent practice that targeted black men and women. The anti-lynching crusades, which included influential women like Ida B. Wells and Mary B. Talbert, raised major awareness against the odious crime of lynchings and mob violence, pushed for multiple anti-lynching bills to be passed, and encouraged racial unity between blacks and whites, especially among women. Slavery was officially abolished in America in 1865 by the 13th Amendment after the Civil War. The success of the war was supposed to mean equality for all. However, the end of slavery was not the end of prejudice and racism toward African Americans. The period of time following the Civil War was a literal rebuilding of the United States post-emancipation, hence why it was called Reconstruction. During this era, lynching was used to degrade black people politically, economically, and socially in an attempt to reverse black gains. African American men and women would be flogged, dismembered, tortured with hot irons, and put to death by rope, flame, and gunshot. People were lynched in broad daylight, or even on Sunday afternoons in front of Christian churches. There were 4,743 reported lynchings between 1882 to 1968 in the United States. 72.7% .7 of those lynched were African American. Lynching was a way for white men to terrorize and abuse the black race. They wanted to instill fear and to silence black people during the 1890s through the early 1900s. Many of the people who incited this racial violence used the accusation of rape, for example, to justify the lynching of a black man. The records of lynchings were usually taken by mob sympathizers, and any of the accusatory statements, such as murder, rape, and etc., were greatly exaggerated because it was more likely to be seen as justified if the victim was demonized. Anti-lynching crusade was a movement started by Mrs. Helen Curtis in 1922, who was inspired by the words of Congressman Leonidas C. Dyer in regards to the Dyer anti-lynching bill, who said, if one million people were united in the demand from the Senate that the Dyer bill be passed, there would be no question of its passage. The movement originated with 16 women of the NAACP annual conference and was under the direction of Mary B. Talbert. The goal of the crusade was to enroll one million people and to raise one million dollars for the cause, which would then be handed over to the NAACP for them to use in support of the Dyer anti-lynching bill. Their slogan, A Million Women Against Lynching, was inspired by Congressman Dyer's original statement. African Americans, including the anti-lynching crusaders, wanted and needed to stand up to pass a federal anti-lynching law. Therefore, the Dyer Bill was created. The anti-lynching bill was first introduced to Congress in 1918 by Republican Congressman Leonidas Dyer of Missouri. The bill was thought to be unconstitutional because, unbelievably, lynching was considered a private act outside of the law. Dyer went on a speaking tour for the NAACP and ads were put out to appeal people to support the anti-lynching bill. The Dyer bill was debated in the House of Representatives from April 1921 to January 1922. The Dyer bill passed the House by a vote of 231 to 119. But sadly, the Senate did not pass the anti-lynching bill. According to James Weldon Johnson, the anti-lynching bill brought out the greatest concerted action I have yet seen the colored people take. Even though the Dyer Bill was not passed, the NAACP succeeded in getting public support, sponsorships, increase in NAACP enrollments, and donations. During the early 1920s, the African American community and the anti-lynching crusaders took a stand by bringing more attention to lynching. African Americans like Mary B. Talbert and Ida B. Wells hosted lectures, meetings, and protests against racial injustice, which made the local and national news. Mary B. Talbert was a spokesperson for the anti-lynching crusades and worked as a director with the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. 
She made a tremendous effort to raise money in order to pass the dire anti-lynching bill for the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. In order to gain support, Talbert and the Crusaders took to the media. She got ads published, sent letters and prayers to women asking them to join the cause by donating, and got people to sign petitions. Talbert strongly believed that the key to success against lynching would be for white women to join the Crusades. Mary B. Talbert sent 1,850 letters to white women known to be sympathetic to social reform in an attempt to convince them to join in the movement. In a specific letter to Mary Ovington, white co-founder of the NAACP, Talbert stresses the fact that 83 women had been lynched, white and black, and that lynchings were not just an African-American issue. Over 2,000 white women offered support to the anti lynching crusaders during Talbert's campaign. Talbert would also send letters to the state director of the anti lynching crusaders, urging them to garner the support of the most influential women in their state and to sell anti lynching crusader buttons to spread awareness. Ida B. Wells was a major contributor to the anti-lynching movement as well. On lynchings, Ida B. Wells wrote the red record, Lynching in All of Its Phases, and Crusade for Justice. Through her lectures, women in Boston, New York, and Philadelphia gave support and recognition to Ms. Wells' ideas and her campaign to end lynchings. lynchings. Through the efforts of the anti-lynching crusades, the ideals of racial unity were emphasized in the black community. Many educated African Americans believed they were responsible for the welfare of their race and thought that their material and moral progress would diminish white racism, a concept that they had referred to as racial uplift. This small group of people was composed of teachers, doctors, and small businessmen who served in their black communities. To counter the justifications for lynching, the Crusaders maintained themes of uplift, dignity, morality, and black womanhood. Mary Jane Brown, a Crusader, said that, the portrayals of black women kept all black people politically, economically, and socially degraded, and so the defense of black womanhood became the defense against terror and abuse. Black people believed that if they used the concept of racial uplift in their communities, this ideology would counteract the negative portrayals of the black race. The anti lynching crusaders of the NAACP took a stand not only by aiding in the fight against lynchings, but also by unifying with white women and other African Americans. The anti-lynching crusades increased awareness to the people of the United States who might have been ignorant about it before. The people who already knew about the lynchings, or even worse, enacted the lynchings, were called out by groups of African Americans. The amount of lynching shrunk during the fight and the movement, and the percentage of African Americans lynched for appearing suspicious was reduced. According to the archives at Tuskegee Institute, the number of cases of lynchings around the time of the start of the anti-lynching crusade in 1892 was 161. After the prime time of the anti lynching crusaders era in 1929, there were only seven recorded cases of African American lynchings. In 1926, the NAACP published a pamphlet that outlined there were 3,436 lynchings from 1889 to 1922. Many white people started to see how hard lynchings and mob violence were, and some even joined the movement to support the cause. Prominent white organizations such as the National Council of Jewish Women endorsed the anti lynching crusades. The push for the Dyer Bill was a huge political stand by the African American people. Even though the bill did not get passed, it still sparked a connection over struggle to be made within the African American community. In modern society, lynching is tried as murder. African Americans are finally becoming recognized for their bravery and fight for equality. They stood up by participating in protests together. This subject is still being discussed and talked about because similar injustices are still occurring today. To this day, reconciliation between lynching victims' families due to the violence is ongoing. And in 2005, Louisiana Congresswoman Mary Landrieu sponsored a resolution in the U.S. Senate to apologize for the Senate's refusal to pass an anti-lynching bill when it should have in the early 1900s. The pain of lynching still lives on, and many black families, largely in the South, have open wounds from their horrific acts. The anti-lynching crusaders fought for an end to the lynch law and black prejudice. The anti lynching crusaders did not single-handedly put an end to lynching, but they performed major acts to help. They brought awareness and visibility to the public more than any other civil rights group about the problem of lynching. Through the efforts of women like Mary B. Talbert and Ida B. Wells, who tirelessly spread awareness about the horrors of lynchings, pushed for bills, and reinstated the ideals of racial uplift in black communities, the number of recorded lynchings drastically decreased. <laughs>